now. So, welcome everybody. Esme led the Quarterly Journal of Social Critique and Culture is organizing an international panel discussion right now on the occasion that Istvan Mesaros, the great Marxist philosopher, the disciple of Lukács, was born 90 years ago. The new issue of Esme led journal, which is going to be the winter issue, will be published uh, very soon. It's coming out with a specific block dedicated for the anniversary of Mesaros. In this volume, you can see all kinds of very interesting uh, analysis, but of course it is all in beautiful Hungarian. So we thought, uh, and uh, with the editor-in-chief Attila Antal, we have been putting this together in order to have a public discussion in English for the more international audience. And then, uh, while I'm introducing the participants, I am also saying in what uh, schedule we are going to take. That is going to be the schedule of speaking. So the first speaker is going to be, and all speakers, by the way, very importantly, uh, they get 10 to 12 minutes in the beginning. Uh, and we are not going to have debates, but each participant comes after the other participant, and then we have a debate. So the first speaker is the founder of Esmeled, Thomas Krauss, a very well-known historian whom I don't need to introduce to you at all. So he's going to start. Then we uh, uh, welcome John Bellamy Foster, professor of sociology at the University of Oregon, and very importantly, editor of Monthly Review, and very importantly, writing the preface to this posthumous uh, volume of Istvan Mesaros. And then John is going to come. Then in case Judith Valencia is able to join us, then she joins us. We don't know whether she can because there are election problems in Venezuela. She is an economist at Universidad Central de Venezuela. And then very importantly, it's a great privilege to welcome Professor Ricardo Antunas here among us from University of Campinas, Brazil. And then, of course, he's a very well-known sociologist with very, very important books, including on Burke. And then after that, we have one uh, speaker who is not a speaker, but has written a comment. Uh, our editor, Peter uh, uh, Sigeti, who is a professor at Dewar University. And then I'm going to read his comments. So I'm going to be his English voice. And then after that, we are going to have, I hope, a very fruitful discussion. But before I give the floor, I wanted to uh, quote something from Istvan Mesaros, because I think it's very important to start with that. And that comes also from the paper of Judith Valencia. I read it just in order to give the spirit for this, this, this the discussion. So Istvan Mesaros, without a radical revision, of the practical premises of the social order of capital, it is not feasible, no alternative, hegemonic to the dominant order. That form can only be guided by productive and distributive exchanges organized communally of social individuals among themselves. A mode of societal reproduction, directly social, in which instead of a mode of division of hierarchical social work, the organization and rational coordination of productive activities, conscientiously managed by producers, freely associates on the basis of their very important word, substantive equality. With this, I would like to give the floor to Thomas Krauss. Let's listen to him. Thank you very much. Thomas, do I need to read your... Thomas? put it into my mouth very importantly. The title of his talk is Commemoration on the 90th Birthday of Istvan Mesaros, Some Words on His Mission. This is the title. The floor is yours, Tomasz. Please mute yourself, Tomasz. We cannot hear at, at this moment.
Tamás! Kapcsold be a mikrofont, Tamás! A mikrofonra kattints rá! És most jó? Tökéletes! Na! So, Tomás, start uh, yes. now. The floor uh, is yours. Friends, I am very happy to see you and uh, uh, to tell the truth. I am very brave guy that uh, I will uh, speak about the philosophy of uh, Istvan Mészáros because I am a historian. And that's why I um, decided uh, uh, to say in his commemorial uh, some words, if you are uh, not against it, if you don't mind. So, um, um, Radio Tukcsak. István, I will read my text because you hear me? Hello, Megillement. Very, Tomás. Everything is okay. Go ahead. István Mészáros will certainly have an important and prominent place in the recent history of Marxism mainly because in his work he never yielded to the temptation of submit to the Syrian voices of bourgeois philosophy. Unlike many others, he never sold his soul to the devil, as Lukács called the spirit of capitalism, which system is always laden with fascism until today. Just as Istvan knew exactly that it was necessary to sail between the Stalinist Kula and the capitalist Charybdis. He already realized at the beginning of his career, right after 1956, what salvation could be. Salvation is in beyond capital. He knew exactly that this was the fundamental problem that is the problem of socialism and communism. The loss of this perspective would lead to the death of Marxism, that is, to the death of humanity. Removing the anti-capitalist perspective from the agenda, that is, the realization of the right-wing alternative, has always signaled the historical defeat of the social democratic, socialist, communist left throughout any region of the world system. In 1914, the collapse of social democracy. In 1919, 1920, the defeat of the socialist revolutions in Eastern Europe. The fascist response to the world economic crisis of 1929-1933, Pinochet 1973, the regime change 1989 in Eastern Europe, or the pandemic today, etc all indicate that Mesaros, to disciple of Lukács, was on the right path throughout his life, working on the philosophy and practice of humanist self-governing socialism. He was a philosopher who was deeply convinced that the true renaissance of Marxism, after all, depends on the global rise of the workers' movement. The spirit of international solidarity has also been in crisis in particular since the collapse of the Soviet Union. The causes leading to collapse are well known today. But we also know that one cannot step into the same river twice. In all his life, Istvan remained faithful to the international tradition of Marx, Lenin, Rosa, Luxembourg, Gramsci, Lukács, and the Latin, Latin American revolutionary spirit of Castro, Che Guevara, and Chavez. The fate of Marxism ultimately depends on the fate of these movements whose philosophical component 
is Mészáros István's work. As István like to paraphrase Rosa Luxemburg, socialism or the destruction of humanity. Here in Eastern Europe, today we are closer to the completion of the second half of the alternative. So there is a reason to, rem to remain faithful to Mesaro's work and Marxism. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. This was great uh, as uh, it gave the spirit for the discussion. And I'm just telling to the, all the participants that in the background, we had an agreement that we are speaking during this panel about Marxism in the 21st century what does that mean after and together with the contribution of Istvan Mesaros? And now with this, I give the floor uh, to John, uh, uh, who also very importantly, and we translated into Hungarian as well, wrote the preface of the posthumous book of Istvan Mesaros, Beyond Leviathan. So John, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself, unmute yourself, please. I'm not gonna speak at the moment um, about Miseros's entire corpus, but I wanna focus uh, instead on Beyond Leviathan, his final work, and just say a few words about that. In um, September, in, in spring uh, 2012, he wrote to me that uh, he had one more book to write, and uh, that was uh, Beyond Leviathan. Of course, he had been thinking about that for some time, but he realized uh, that he needed to uh, write a work on the state. The state had been, uh, been part of, of his analysis all along, but he needed to do a major historical theoretical work on the state to uh, complement uh, Beyond Capital. And uh, he started in on that in earnest um, in 2012, although he already had some notes. And uh, he worked on it for the last uh, five years of his life where he was, he was um, fighting various illnesses at the time. But he managed to, it was, it was to be three volumes, the uh, historic challenge, the harsh reality, and the necessary alternative, he managed to almost complete uh, the first volume, The Historic Challenge, which we're publishing under the title Beyond Leviathan. And uh, he had a second, um, what he called a second draft version. The fine, the, he always did three drafts. He had a second draft version of much of the rest of the the book, and um, but it's all in handwritten notes and requires organizing. And um, we plan to publish that, although it will take quite a while, uh, uh, under the um, title "Critique of Leviathan." So uh, he he uh, managed to uh, bring together uh, much of his analysis on the, on the state and. Uh, the, the starting point really was um, not, not how he started the book, but, but the starting point of his research uh, came from uh, Norberto Bobbio's uh, claim that there was no Marxist theory of the state. And, uh, and he decided to take that on directly. Bobbio was a, a major, uh, major, um, influence on his thought, although um, coming from a different political tradition. And um, Mazaros uh, recognized that what Bobbio was saying was not that there weren't uh, Marxist uh, treatments of the, the capitalist state, and we all know um, many of those, but, but basically the, the Marxian theory of the withering away of the state the Marxian theory of a state in transition that would that would um, conform to the requirements of socialism didn't exist, and um, 
and others had uh, claimed uh, the, the uh, same thing, like uh, Lucio Coletti. So Maseros uh, uh, sought to take that issue on and to take it on in a work that started with, with Plato and went through the entire history of political theory, the, entire, the history of the state um, over, over the millennia and uh, un trying to understand the uh, substantive issues of the state and from the standpoint of, of materiality. But he believed that all the great theories of the state had originated in periods of crisis. So he, he explored in great depth um, uh, the, the uh, state theories of Plato, Aristotle, um, the um, Machiavelli, Tomasio, Amor, Bacon, Hobbes, Hegel, Marx, and many other thinkers in order to, um, and, and dealt with them uh, basically chronologically in a way, in order to uh, get at the main features of the state. And he saw the liberal uh, view of the state as focusing on liberal rights and uh, the legislative character of the state, that is the state as law. And he believed that went in circles uh, as idealism often does. And that only a, an approach to the state that, that was in the tradition of Marx and Lenin and, and began with materiality could actually say anything truly meaningful about the state other in, than in purely formal terms. So he criticized, um, uh, say, Ernst Barker um, as an example of this circular approach uh, to the state within the liberal tradition. And at the same time, there were thinkers like Weber who, who essentially said might is right. Um, the state has a monopoly on the le legitimate use of force. And Maseros argued that the bourgeois view went back and forth between this, this basically might is right view, which was never uh, fully scrutinized within the bourgeois tradition and a view that the state was law uh, and the state was, uh, was uh, right and uh, never um, got beyond those formal conceptions. For him, the state had to be viewed as part of the organic system of part of the social metabolic reproduction of capital. And so he, he approached it in that way. And, uh, and of course, his goal was to understand uh, how uh, a revolution could occur, revolutions could occur that, that transformed uh, uh, the capitalist state and ultimately you know, eradicated the capitalist state and replaced it with some other uh, form of political structure based on, on uh, communal control. Uh, he argued that no, no society could exist without an overall political command structure, but the kind of uh, command structure associated with the state was not the, the only uh, form uh, that um, uh, a political command structure could take. And uh, uh, because the state is, is based on the alienation uh, from uh, the, from uh, the rest of society, from from uh, almost all of society, and so understanding that, in articulating and developing it, and developing an alternative was what this work was about, and it's based, of course, on beyond capital, where he understood capitalism as a social metabolic uh, system of reproduction, and so as as uh, feeding on itself. Um, in, in uh, multiple ways um, based on, on uh, alienated mediations, uh, second order mediations and, and reinforcing itself, but ultimately uncontrollable. And uh, so it, it, it descends into crisis and the state is unable to, to um, control this, uh, this um, uh, centrifugal system. And uh, it, this helps, this creates a possibility for, for massive uh, social change. Now, I think the one reason why Isfahan, why Mazaros was so, so uh, insistent and, and so determined to deal with the state 
of 2000, from you know, beginning in 2012 was, of course, his, his relationship with Chavez, who, who died at that time, and uh, the, um, the recognition that his Beyond Capital had actually played such a big role in, in, the, in the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela and in conceptions of, of the transformation of the state as, as part of a, a socialism for the 21st century. And uh, it was in the interest of that struggle and in order to develop it, in order to make the critique more comprehensive and to provide more concrete alternatives that he took on beyond Leviathan. Essentially, beyond capital was not enough. It had to be complemented uh, with beyond Leviathan. So it really is the capstone of his work, even though, of course, beyond uh, capital is um, is uh, what um, earned him his his reputation. Well, I mean, the Marxist theory of alienation earned him his reputation, but beyond capital has long uh, been seen as his magnum opus. But here he he um, tried to complement that with another magnum opus at the very end of his life that would uh, close the circle on capitalism. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this extremely uh, nuanced uh, uh, introduction into the problems. And thank you for keeping the time as well. And then with this, uh, we go now from New York to Campinas and then uh, uh, Professor Antunes has written a beautiful piece for us, Istvan Mesaros and the Social Metabolism of the Capital System. It's normality, is destructiveness, that's the title. And I think we are going to continue with the same problem that the elimination of uh, wage labor, uh, the elimination of capital, not capitalism, but capital, and very importantly, the withering of the of, of way of the state are not something to be separated, but this is the only way how things can actually happen in case not barbarism or <laughs> something. So with this, I give the floor to Ricardo, and then the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, I would like to thank Esmelet magazine that organized this important seminar about Stephen Mezaro's work. Many thanks to Attila Melek, to Atila Antal, and Thomas Kraus, too, is a big pleasure to me to stay in this moment, in this session, to remember our friend, Steven Mezaros. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be in this session with Bellamy Foster, and I hope with Judith Valencia, too. Uh, I will speak slowly, sorry, because my English is not good enough. <clears throat> Stephen Mezaros constitutes himself as a reference for so many who struggle against the destructive society. He became the one who contributed to the realizing of an original and critical work against so many mystifications present today. It's good, the sounds. Can you hear me? It's okay? Absolutely clear, crystal clear, Ricardo. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Endowed with enormous erudition, Mesaros dominates political economy, philosophy, social theory, literature, like a few others. Given the dimension of his work, it seems sufficient 
to recall, among man, many others, his books, Marx's Theory of Alienation, The Power of Ideology, and Beyond Capital. I believe that these three books are the main ones in the wealth of his production. They are published in several countries from north to south of the world, including China, India, Japan, Brazil, Mexico, Venezuela, etc. Due to the impossibility of trading his important thesis, I will point out here the one that the tragedy of the system and capital, the system and capital of our time has made urgent. We are, I am referring to the thesis of the inverted commas, social metabolism of the capital system. It was Marx, it was Marx in the capital who, present, who presented the rich metaphor of social metabolism to better understanding the mechanism that moves the capital system. We remember the volume one of capital. With Mesaros, especially in Beyond the Capital, this formulation found a rich development. The social metabolism of the capital system is the result of a historical process that subsumes labor to capital. In order to make a capital production, it was necessary to separate use value from exchange value, subordinating the former use value to the later exchange value. In this way, the conditions, the conditions to the advent of the social metabolic order can be found basically in the separation and alienation between workers and the means of production. The alienation and the estrangement the corrosion of labor, the destruction of nature, the oppresses, oppression, the oppression of gender, race, ethnicities, the exacerbation of racism, xenophobia, homophobia, among others, are expressions of the destructiveness of the capital system. The aggravation of these critical situations dates back to 1968. After that, according Mesaros, the capital system entered a long period characterized by a depressed continuum when the emerging, the emerging economic crisis would be structural. This is a very, very important and original thesis from Stephen Mezar. In my opinion, was the first several decades ago to take this point 
at this moment, it is very, very important. In other words, more according to Mesaros, more than a crisis of capitalism, Mesaros warns that it is a structural, structural and permanent crisis of the capital system. In order to have an effective apprehension of Mesaros original formulation, it is necessary to defer to differ capital and capitalism. This question for Stephen Mesaros is a crucial. I can debate several times during decades with him about this crucial question to Mesaros. The first capital precedes capitalism. See, for example, the commercial capital. But capital has survived. Capital has survived in the countries post-capitalist, the so-called socialist bloc. But assuming a new form, According to Mesaros, capitalism, capitalism constituted itself as the dominant form of capital system, but it is not the only one. This is the second point, point vital, in my opinion, about Mesaros' work. I repeat, capitalism constituted itself as, a, as the dominant form of capital system, but it is not the only one. The continuity of capital after capitalism can take place through the post-capitalist capital societies, as in the Soviet Union and in the so-called socialist bloc. This original formulation is quite different, for example, from the concept of the state capitalism from Charles Bettelien, for example, or the bureaucratic socialism. This conception from Mesaros provides a new analytical vein for understanding the endurance, the permanence of capital, even at the end of the capitalism. The example of China Revolution is very emblematic. The theoretical and political consequences are not few. For example, the environmental destruction, the environment destruction that occurred in the Soviet Union and the socialist bloc, almost even inverted commas, socialist bloc block is the result of one of its new forms of existence of the capital system. In this case, according to Mesaros, the post-capitalist capital society, the post-capitalist form of Capital systems is absolutely original. It's a polemic thesis. I know it's very polemic, but it's new and ra is radical. The, the present, the real situation 
is big indication that Bezaro's tendency is right. In order to understand the essential thesis from Mezaro's work, it is necessary to recover another central and last point that I will put here to try to finish. For the author, Mezaro's, the social metabolism of the capital system is constituted by the tripod, tripod, capital, wage labor, and state, which means that, so important for Mesaros, which means that the complete elimination of the capital system will only be possible, will only be possible with the extinction of the three elements that support it, wage, labor, capital, and state. It is not enough to eliminate one or even two feet, as done in the Soviet Union and during the first decades of China Revolution. It was no accident that in the last years of his life, and John talked about it uh, uh, first, it was not accident that in the last years of his life, Mesarius dedicated himself to analyze the necessity of the uterine away of the state. For a, small, for a small example of this matter, see the chapter entitled The Mountain We Must Conquer, Reflection on the State. This seminal chapter is part of the material left unfinished by Mesarus for his last book, Beyond Leviathan, which will be some published by Monte Review, of course, and by Boy Tempo Press, the important publisher of Mesarus' work in Brazil. To make, a, to make a brief summary and to conclude, huh? The social metabolism of the capital is expansionist, is destructive and uncontrollable. I would be a, it, it would be a true miracle that this real Frankenstein did not demonstrate its violence and lethality during the pandemic capitalist or Virotic capitalist, in my words. I would like, Atla, that in the second phase to take two minutes only, but I feel it here né, to stay, I think, during the, the time. Thank you very much. Ricardo, thank you very much. Excellent, really very nice. And then you have heated the atmosphere very well. And I think we are going to have a discussion. Uh, not only because of the crisis of capitalism, but because of thinking as well. Uh, in the meantime, before I continue with the written comment of Peter uh, Sigeti, I think it's very important to celebrate one more thing beyond the work of Mesaros, is that one of our speakers, John Bellamy Foster, got uh, for uh, the book, The Return of Nature, Socialism and Ecology, uh, has won an Isaac Deutsche Prize, which is a very prestigious prize. So congratulations, John, for this. And I have to tell that now we have two Isaac Deutsche winners in this panel. So I think that the discussion should really go on. So that's also very nice. Now, I think now I come to read the written comment of Peter Sigeti, uh, our uh, longtime editor and uh, extremely well prepared also in philosophy. So I'm going to read his two pages. 
And I try to read it in a way that you can actually follow it, which is going to be difficult. So from the rich oeuvre of Istvan Mesaros, we here highlight his philosophy level analysis of capitalism. His opus magnum, Beyond Capital, was first published in 1995 in London. The Hungarian language version was published within the Esmail at Könftar series in 2008. From the liberation of Hungary in 1945 from the Nazis until his emigration in 1956, he worked in a milieu close to George Lukács, where philosophy was pursued as a serious science. In this milieu, everyone knew what philosophy was, unlike today, when even philosophers are unfamiliar with the specifically philosophical body of knowledge that differs from the knowledge of the specialized dis disciplines. They knew that philosophy aims at finding the answer to the question of the historical trajectory of humanity, to the question of where it came from, where it is now, and which way it is heading. According to his view, capitalism is in a structural crisis, made by increasingly uncontrollable, uncontrollable contradictions. This fact makes it warranted to explore the theoretical possibilities of transition towards socialism, including the critical analysis of the historic legacy of the previous socialistic experiments. And now a quotation comes. We have just left the 20th century behind, which is called the American century, by the loudest apologists of capital. They talk as if the other, as if the October Revolution in 1917, or the Cuban and Chinese revolutions in the subsequent decades, or the anti-colonial liberation struggles had never happened. Not to mention the humiliating defeats suffered by the US itself in Vietnam. The uncritical champions of the existing order actually believe that not only the next century but also the whole millennium ahead of us is destined to run its course in accordance to the immutable rules of the Pax Americana. But however much the balance of forces shifted toward capital in the past decade, the deep-seated causes of the ruptures of the 20th century, including the two world wars, are just as unresolved now as they were before. Quite the opposite. Every new round of delaying of the outbreak of the crisis can only deepen the contradictions of the capital system, resulting in an ever-growing threat to the mere survival of humanity. The persistence of unresolvable antagonisms, along with the uncontrollability uncont of capital, can still create an illusion of sustainability. But we will be forced, sooner or later, to face the accumulated problems that are reaching deadly proportions. If the coming century is to be actually the triumphant American century of capital, then humanity will not have another century, let alone another millennium. This has nothing to do with anti-Americanism, uh, in brackets referring back to Rosa Luxemburg socialism or barbarism. Capitalist globalization is incompatible with humanistic universality. As Mesaros pointed out, the fate of socialism will eventually be decided in the, strongest link in, in the strongest link in the chain, that is, in the United States. At the same time, the American way of absolutely uh, cannot be extended to the whole humanity. Why? This is the answer of Mesaros the exploitation of the human and material reserves of our planet to the benefit of a small number of capitalist countries actually cannot be generalized, even if the actual history of imperialism could be overwritten to its very opposite, complemented with the imaginary inversion of the existing relations of power and dependence to the benefit of the underdeveloped countries. If we thus generalize the exploitative utilization of the limited resources of our planet, which has already caused terrible damage, 
despite the fact that it has been done by only a privileged minority. That would bring the immediate collapse of the whole system. This quotation was from beyond capital. Uh, and I think we have to keep this in mind, that's for sure. To avoid the collapse and the destruction of the inorganic body of humanity, the ecosystem, the whole system of the reproduction of social metabolism needs to be transformed. The capital relation is a specific mode, and this is a quote from May Saros again, a specific mode of the control of social metabolism, end of the quote, where one class of individuals produces the wealth of the nation in the subaltern function of mere implementation, while on the other side, the members of the bourgeois class as representatives of capital are in the position of commanders who control both the means of production and those who operate them and also control and shape the modes and the forms of distribution. It is quite peculiar reciprocal relation that, and this is a quotation, hides a structurally protected exploitative hierarchy. Uh, once again, a very important term. The commodity relation as the value relation is only a mediator of the commodity relation as a historically existing and as such not eternal private appropriation relation. Mesaros, as a towering contributor to the development of the classical tradition, is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, contemporary scholar within the philosophy level research of capitalism. The history of the reception of his works is in itself a complex topic waiting to be comprehensively analyzed. His diligent life and unwavering work ethic organically complemented by his continued presence in the life of the international socialist move movement was exemplary. So this was the written comment of Peter Sigeti. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much for Zoltan Moteika, another editor who has been translating into English. So thank you very much. And with this, I leave the floor open for discussions. People can react to each other. Ricardo, you have already said two things. First, you have to go to a class sooner or later. Second, that you have two additional minutes to, to say. So maybe uh, you can continue or the others. I don't know. I mean, I'd let you. So Ricardo, why don't you start with your two minutes in order to, to save before you have to go to a class? Okay. No, no, I, I have I have I have I have a little bit more. Of course, I had, I had. It's okay. It's okay now. It's okay. Cool. Then the floor is open now. Who would like to comment? I think there were some very eyebrows were going up and down when it was about socialism and capital and state capitalism and capitalism, right? So anybody would like to comment that? <laughs> Tomas, why don't you start? Tomas, unmute yourself. So please. The micro, the microphone, please. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. I, uh, I wanted to uh, Ricardo first. He's okay. a guest, Ricardo. He has an advantage to speak. Okay. Ricardo, the floor is given to you again, <laughs> second time. Anybody okay. can also write uh, questions in the chat as well, which I'm going to read loud. And in case you have problem with the language, I try to do my best to translate it into English. So right. once again, just go ahead. Feel free to discuss. This is a very important moment. Ricardo, yeah, the floor is yours. Ricardo and John. OK. No, I, I would like you only to finish my presentation uh, with two references. I thought. I would be, it would be a true miracle, miracle that this real Frankenstein, social Frankenstein did not demonstrate its violence, the capitalism, pandemic capitalism or the virotical capitalism situation today. Could it not be better nowadays to remember Karl Polanyi's metaphor to the satanic muse in the book, The Great Transformation? He, I think this is a 
good to remember. It, to finish, the reinvention of a new social metabolism beyond the capital, the reinvention of a new social metabolism beyond the capital to remember and honor to Steven Medaros is the greatest challenge of our time. Maybe it's better, it seems better to say hard times to remember Charles Dickens, the author that Stephen Mezaros liked so much. This is the point that I would like to finish to remember Dickens and to remember personally my big friend that was Stephen Mezaros. It's just this point, I complete my presentation. Thank you, Thomas, very much. Thank you very much for this additional comment and then updating some of the problems which we are in. Uh, who would like you to comment? John, would you like to, to react to the, to the other speakers? Uh, please unmute yourself, John, sorry. John, the microphone is not on. Unmute yourself, please. Yes, now it's okay. I collected twice. Oops. Good. There, there are a number of uh, ways in which uh, Maseros altered the parameters of how we think about uh, the uh, general crisis of our times. And some of this came out in, in the, the talks and I just wanted to point to um, a few of them. First of all, the, um, the emphasis on, on the capital system and distinguishing that from capitalism. So he was able in this way to, uh, to develop a critique of the Soviet bloc, uh, actually what we used to call actually existing socialism the are post-revolutionary societies that uh, recognize that uh, capital was still prominent in the workings of their society because the, the capital labor relation had not been fundamentally altered. Uh, the, the state had moved in uh, to manage capital. So the, the whole argument on the capital system is very important uh, in in dealing with uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Soviet bloc and, and for us, uh, in order to understand uh, what the, the conditions of our time are and, and the failures of the, of the uh, first wave of, of socialist revolutions. Another, another place where he, he altered the parameters as was emphasized was in his emphasis on the uh, structural crisis of capitalism or the structure yeah the structural crisis of capital of the capital system and not um not simply um uh, talking about crises which of course occur but focusing as early as 1970 on on the structural crisis of capital as uh, the uh, fundamental issue. And that was a major shift. A, a, a third area in which he, um, he introduced at that time in the, um, where he changed the parameters is in, in already in, in uh, his um, later prefaces, I think it was the third preface to um, Marx's theory of alienation and his Deutscher lecture at that time, uh, and, um, and also in Beyond Capital in 1995, he uh, started uh, referring to the absolute limits of, of um, the social metabolic uh, reproduction of capital. He, he focused on, on the absolute limits of the system in, uh, its failure to its inability to deal with 
the problem of the environment, its inability to deal with the problem of the nation state because uh, nation states are irrevocably a part of the system of capital and also in its inability to address uh, the, the question of substantive equality. And so he introduced those elements as constituting uh, the structural crisis of capital in a way that nobody else had before. The, um, the, uh, another way in which he, um, he uh, changed the parameters was um, by um, stressing that the, the United States was the, strong, the strongest link. We always talked in terms of the weakest link, in terms of revolution in the periphery. He put on the agenda uh, that um, the United States as the strongest link had to be uh, encompassed in, in uh, the social tr transformation uh, in the revolution. So he, he um, was very strong in, in, uh, in not basing the analysis simply on, on, a, on the periphery, although he, he recognized the, the role of imperialism, but also um, uh, focusing on the strongest league. I think there was also an aspect of Maseros that, that he didn't really uh, accept um, the third world view uh, he, saw he saw countries like um, Brazil, uh, for example, or Venezuela outside of a typical um, uh, north-south perspective. Uh, he he um, therefore gave them a much larger role in his, his theory of social transformation. And finally, you know, his emphasis is his bringing back the notion of the withering of the way of the state change the parameters of uh, socialist theory uh, by returning to Marx and Lenin on that in a way that uh, no one else had before and developing that systematically. Uh, I um, was introduced to Marx's theory uh, of the state uh, was, was mainly about Ralph Miliband and, and Palancis and uh, debates over um, of, over how we were going to manage and, and take control of the capitalist state. And uh, Maseros went back to Marx and Lenin and started talking about a much more radical notion of transformation of the political, overall political command of society. And in that context, he, he developed what we, um, what through the Venezuelan revolution, we we think of as the communal state as a, as a transition away from uh, capitalism. So I just wanted to emphasize these things. And of course, we can, we can also talk about how fundamentally he, he changed our understanding of Marx's theory of alienation. I think his was the, the deepest analysis, um, his, his analysis on, on alienated mediations and as um, as key and uh, his ontological pers perspective that human beings are the self-mediating beings of nature. All of this, I think, uh, transformed Marxist theory, uh, but, but his, tr his, uh, his uh, major transformations in Marxist theory have not been recognized, say, in the English speaking world. They've been recognized, uh, I think, in in Brazil, in, I mean, in Latin America, they've been recognized in Southern Europe where he's had a lot of influence, but he's had very little influence actually in the English speaking countries or even uh, Western Europe. And I just wanted to mention that. And I think it is because uh, he was uh, emphasizing revolution in, in a way that um, is outside the, uh, the um, experience, the current experience and, and conditions and, and ways of thinking in Western European societies. When, when, um, you, um, when, when Maseros is, a, is approached in the United States, uh, the students and, and uh, socialists have a much 
more difficult understand uh, time understanding what he was doing uh, than than say thinkers in Brazil or Venezuela because they're actually much closer uh, in in terms of their practice to the issues uh, that he raised and so uh, he hasn't gotten the recognition because his his work is is so radical is so revolutionary in in scope that it completely um, bypassed the Western European discussions, which are so limited in, in the way they approach socialism, even within the Marxist tradition. So uh, anyway, these are things I was thinking about when I was listening um, to all of you. And, and uh, I, I, was, I was especially um, impressed by the way in which his breakthroughs uh, in socialist theory were being underscored. And uh, in the meantime, we have got also a question already. Uh, and uh, I just put it into the discussion because I think very important points have been made by John and then uh, the revolution uh, or, or the, the process in Venezuela it's also come up and the withering of the, the way of the state, how it can be done and how it's going to happen. Uh, but here is a, one more question which is related. And this is coming from El Lavalier. Many thanks to all of you for your interesting presentation. I like May Sarush very much and believe his thinking is highly relevant. Here is my question, maybe for John, but I think for the others as well, considering Mesaro's critique of the state, how do you think he would have viewed the passive role taken by states during the pandemic crisis? Power abuses, centralization, censorship, and violations of human rights and liberties, among others, are commonplace in many countries, but in some place, uh, places, state intervention helped to limit job losses, for instance, but I'm not for, for the state. Opinion surveys show that people in many countries trust their state more than before sank in advance. So we come to this issue of state in the current pandemic crisis as well and how it can be seen from the point of view of Mesaros. So I just try to repeat the question, how we can actually evaluate uh, the recent developments. This is how we can translate the question. And then I think we have uh, two more questions which I read loud. And this is coming from Murillo van der Laan. And then he has two questions for uh, if there is enough time, uh, if he could comment about the influence of Sweezy, uh, Baran Magdoff, I can't see Baran, uh, sorry, yes, it is Baran. Yes, Magdoff and the monthly <laughs> review group. No, no, I know Baran, of course, but I could not read it properly on my computer. Uh, on Mesaro's idea of uh, the structural crisis of capital. And then the second, uh, Foster recovered Lukács ontology in his brilliant elaboration on nature. I was wondering if he sees continuities and discontinuities between the ontology of Lukács and Mesaro's approach on nature. So these are the additional questions. Oh. I think we have we have enough questions for the next one hour, in, in my <laughs> understanding. <laughs> but the floor is open now. So who would like to, to react? Attila. Attila. Yes. Attila. Yes. I would like to use two minutes more to remember, and because I agree completely the very good explanation that uh, um, uh, Bellamy do now. I think it is the spirit from Mesaros, né? the crucial imperative of our time, this era of darkness, is to reinvent a new system of social metabolism where humanity is endowed with meaning in its most vital and essential activities, work, environmental question, the substantive equality, etc. And it is exactly this situation, exponentially 
aggravated by the pandemic crisis, that became an imperative to remember the general idea from Mesaros, as so many times demonstrated by Mesaros, that is necessary the reinventing, reinventing a new way of life, a new system of social metabolism beyond the capital. The idea that socialism is over, a fiction that unfortunately find many followers is crazy. If capitalism, if capitalism took at least three three centuries to be constituted, if we think from the primitive accumulation to the revolution, uh, industrial revolution, we show the socialism have been constituted and fully adjusted uh, in a simple center. No, the reinvention of a new system of a new kind of socialism is the great challenge of our time. This is the principal lesson that I learned to Mesaros all time, right? which allows me to say in the midst of his giant work that is, that it is, is perhaps Stephen Mesaros most contemporary and your thesis are currently. This idea, the reinvention of the new kind of life is crucial. And for this to finish, this is very important. The extra parliamentary change uh, struggle against the capital, different the institutional uh, struggles that are so limited is just to finish. To me, it was a very, very big pleasure to stay with you all in this very good session. Uh, Stephen Mesaros is 19 years life. Eh? He is our in our discussion. Many thanks. Yeah. Obrigado, Ricardo. Very good. Obrigado. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Now, with this, uh, I give the floor to the other panelists, and uh, other people can also join in case they would like to talk. Tomas, the floor is I, yours. I have a recommendation. I, uh, I will react. Uh, I, I have only two small remarks. I would give more time to John to react on the big questions on the state. They are very important. Yes. My small, uh, 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 my small two remarks uh, relating to the question about the character of the old st uh, state socialist regimes in Eastern Europe and in the Soviet Union. Uh, Ricardo analyzed the position of uh, Istvan, who uh, he didn't mention in this way, but uh, he understand Istvan was a very practical thinker. And uh, he uh, knew how to use the theory in the, in the not propaganda, in the, uh, in the propaganda. And he, uh, didn't like very much the theory of state capitalism okay. on the old regimes. He criticized it very much. We visited him sometimes in England and he mentioned that this uh, theory is very bad because cannot explain anything on the old regimes. And then, then we, uh, and that was uh, very interesting because he said that uh, this theory makes more uh, confusion that clear, that clear uh, imagination of, of the old regimes because uh, uh, the, for example, the bureaucracy is not bourgeoisie. The, uh, the 
so-called uh, uh, capital system has very different forms in the world system and uh, and uh, the east european post capitalism in economic sense and political sense etc was something else and this specific uh, and we have to analyze the specific features of this regime this is a methodological and political and etc ideological question the second uh, um, related to the state as a problem. Uh, Istvan uh, didn't like very much uh, the bourgeois propagandists of the uh, so-called human rights propagandists because they uh, divided the, uh, two questions which uh, were together, really are together. The, economic and social question and the political juridical question of the state. You see, and he supposed that we have to attack the liberals on in this way, uh, in, in this direction, that they make uh, um, uh, uh, um, an agis or race. Um, so the whole and part. What? The whole and the parts. The whole, the, and the, the parts. whole and the parts. And uh, uh, the, this is the truck of the liberals all the time. This is that the they deal uh, only with, with, with the parts. They are not interested in the whole. They don't want to speak about the whole. And the Marxists have to speak about this whole okay. system. This is uh, the, the, the main uh, message of Istvan for today to analyze the whole. And uh, Ricardo and, and, and John on this position, and I like them, and thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you very much, Tomas, for this. Excellent. And then let's continue. Uh, John, you have been asked several times to react. You may do that now. Other people can also come. I. Uh, Well, I'll, um, I'll say a few points. In, in terms of um, what Ricardo was, was talking about, I think he's right to underscore social metabolic reproduction as, as the core of, um, of um, Mesros' contribution. I mean, everything rests on, on that dialectical conception that he developed his entire critique and so I think Ricardo is is right in in emphasizing that, and I I think that's another way, a really crucial way, in in which uh, he uh, changed our thinking. It's a way of thinking dialectically and 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 materialistically about uh, the the entire uh, system of capital, and I also think um, that. Um, Tomas's um, point that he just made about um, about um, state capitalism and and um, Mesros's uh, view of uh, of uh, the Eastern uh, European socialism about um, of uh, of uh, the Soviet uh, type system that. Um, he didn't. He didn't uh, see this as state capitalism. Thought that that is a worthless conception. It was basically a worthless conception when it's applied to the West too. Uh, and uh, but it certainly wasn't a, a useful way to uh, look at uh, the uh, the Soviet bloc or actually existing socialism. Well, we we developed um, and Paul Sweezy played a, a leading role in this and in. in in arguing in using the concept of post-revolutionary societies and uh, recognizing that uh, the societies that that developed let's say the Soviet society was was neither um, was neither capitalist in the traditional sense um, nor socialist and that fit very well with with um, with um, Mazeros' approach to, to the Soviet Union as, as being a part of the capital system. 
So we often, you know, use the term post-revolutionary society. He would use that too to to open up the discussion rather than to try to to box um, uh, those societies in into a definition of socialism or a definition of capitalism or somehow present some simple hybrid. Uh, uh, it the notion of post-revolutionary society actually opens up the question and allows you to look at what was distinctive and and uh, and what remained the same. So uh, that's often the way we think about it. The um, somebody I guess asked about well how the withering away of the state would occur, and um, I think as Tomas said, uh, this one was very practical and and he also recognized history and contingency so there's no there's no uh, all encompassing answer to that but the the Venezuelan revolution was certainly very important to him and he thought Chavez was was making real inroads on that and and the withering away of the state doesn't happen all at once it withers right it it's great it's a process and uh, one of the um, what came to be called the um, communal state in 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 the Bolivarian Revolution was about uh, the state actually transferring a lot of its capacities and powers to to uh, the communal sector and encouraging the growth of the communes. And actually, Mesuros was very played a very very important role from nineteen. 93 on in 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 getting Chavez to take that route of course it was it was the they had a um, they had a meeting of minds on this actually I should say from 2001 on because they never actually met till 2001 but uh, but um, the whole notion of transferring state powers to the com communes to create a different kind of uh, political structure uh, was was a strategy of the withering way of the state. It's not the only way it could occur, and it's not the whole, um, it's not the entirety of it. Um, but that meant that the state had to have, uh, had to have more power in the, uh, in some ways, the executive, it had to, it had to have the power to transfer to power and, um, and to maintain this new system. So uh, it's a, it was a, it's a complex development, but but basically, uh, Mazeros's argument, uh, and this was something that he talked about with Chavez. Mazeros's argument was that you had to make the revolution irreversible. Why has the Venezuelan revolution uh, lasted so long? Given there's uh, this modern siege warfare that the United States has unleashed, unleashed is like nothing we've ever seen before and yet they're surviving. Why is it that they resist so much? It's because the revolution was to a considerable extent made irreversible. Why? Because it transferred power to uh, the, the population through the communes and the communal councils and other methods. So they have something to defend. And even when, um, even when the, the current government under Maduro comes under increasing criticism, still um, the Chavista project goes on um, with, with uh, other groups arising that are promoting the revolution. So the, the idea is um, the um, transformation can occur by, by uh, making the revolution irreversible, that is, by transferring the power to the people, so they're not going to give up very easily. Uh, the um, in terms of the question uh, with the COVID nineteen, some um, states have taken action, others haven't. I think this is also a question of you know the state in in the capitalist state is an alienated political structure, maybe no more so, never more than in the United States. Uh, where um, almost 300,000 people have died while they're talking about, um, uh, you know, the promoting the economy. Uh, and uh, the, um, it's an alienated political structure, but in some places, what we call the state is less alienated. 
it um, and what's the measure of that? Um, one of the measures is that it puts the population before um, before um, uh, capital, and to the extent that that is occurring, and you can see that manifested in the actions of certain states, you can see that uh, it's less alienated um, towards capital insofar as as it is is geared to the needs of the population we know what we we you know we know exactly what to do to combat uh covid-19 it isn't it isn't really a practical or theoretical problem the problem is is capital itself and and what we're willing to do um, um the extent to which we're willing to adopt an anti-capitalist logic so the state the capitalist state is always an, um, a question of political alienation. The, in terms of the question on Sweezy Baran and Magdoff and the structural crisis of capital, I don't think there was um, there wasn't any disagreement um, between uh, the between um, Mazeros and let's say um, Magdoff and Sweezy um, or or with me for that matter. We you know we. We discussed these things for many years, but uh, his understanding of the fundamental economic crisis and of imperialism and um, of the structural crisis of capitalism was, uh, in political economic terms, I think, um, identical with ours. Um, and uh, so um, there, you know, they, and the influences went back and forth. Um, so. Uh, I mean, Magdoff um, was, well, I, I guess Magdoff and, and uh, Mazeros were very, very close uh, for a whole lot of, um, for a long time. And, um, and, um, and, and um, uh, after Magdoff's death, I played uh, more of that role uh, with Mazeros, but, uh, but, um, he, you know, it was, it was a relationship that went on for 40, 40 years or so. And uh, yeah, the political economic analysis was the same. He understood about the stagnation, the financial, financialization, uh, the, um, the um, over exploitation uh, of, um, of populations in the, in, uh, in the global south, and uh, he 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 um, he incorporated that into all of his works. He understood that there were problems of overaccumulation. We can talk about that more in more specific terms, but uh, I don't. There was no there was no difference in analysis in that respect, and um, and um, in terms of Lukacs's ontology um, and and. Um, and his approach to nature, I know um, Mazeros had not really had not read. Um, I believe, you know, he said to me um, that uh, he hadn't read Lukacs's ontology uh, when when he was when he developed his own ideas along that line. Uh, but uh, of course, they came out of a common tradition, and uh, they're, they're the notion of um, the centrality of, of metabolism was there in in um, in Mazeros's work. You can see that um, uh, in um, you can see that in uh, Marxist theory of alienation. He never departed from the conception of the dialectics of nature, but he saw it uh, more in terms of of metabolism and that relationship. This, uh, the, the metabolic relation with nature, the social metabolism, and uh, that's where Lukacs uh, went with his own conception of the dialectics of nature, which he never rejected. Um, however much you, you know, however much is made of uh, footnote six, the little footnote six in in history of class consciousness, uh, Mace, uh, Lukacs never rejected uh, dialectics of nature. In fact, he talks about it elsewhere in the book. Um, so um, in, in history and class consciousness, uh, he did, but it was a problem that had to be worked out. How do we talk about what he called the merely objective 
dialectics of nature and much of his later work uh, dealt with that. And uh, there is a very close relationship then between um, Maserol's Marxist theory of alienation and where um, Lukács went uh, with his work. And, um, but um, uh, the, um, it was more like they, I mean, they corresponded um, until the end, but um, it was more like they were going in parallel directions than, than um, one influenced the other on that. But this, this uh, recapturing of, of Marx's ontology uh, was, uh, was um, crucial to both. So I guess I've answered all the questions as well as I could. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a, a brilliant discussion. I have uh, one more little question in head out of the discussions previously uh, referring to Ricardo, Tomas and, and uh, your presentation as well, which is once again, this first cycle of socialism. Uh, so don't you think that we need to develop because Mesaros is crystal clear in his idea of social metabolism, which is clearly the thing how the system is homogenized, how capital can um, digest anything it wants in that sense. But we all speak about the specificity of the first cycle of socialism and its hybridity. Don't you think that we need to theorize more on this hybridity uh, character of the first cycle in order to restart the cycle in the 21st century? That's an open question. What was the word? The hybridity, word. hybridity. Don't you think that we need to theorize a little bit more on the hybridity of the first cycle of socialism from the point of view of the 21st century and the second cycle? Because Misaros is clear, he homogenizes uh, things and this is how he makes his critique extremely sharp. But don't you think that we need to start thinking also about this hybridity in a new way? That's my question. Because that was the point of Ricardo. I don't know the word hybridity. Hybridity. I don't understand either what, what, no, no. what you say. Because it was a mixed. That was, there was capital. That's the argument of Mesaros. Oh, but then oh, various, various elements of capitalism were taken out. Plus, it was actually developing some kind of a mixed economy. Don't you think that we need to dwell on a little bit uh, more on this first cycle? Okay. Oh, uh, hybridity. 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 Sorry for my English. I am. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hybridity. He, he constantly analyzed how the different elements of capital reinforced each other. Uh, so um, That's great. the um, and and but capital wasn't capital, the capitalist system, this uh, its social metabolic reproduction is not um, it's not entirely homogenized. It has these different elements that reinforce each other but also come in crisis with each other. So it has to constantly reinvent its circuit. Um, for example, you know, the relation between capital, the state, um, wage labor, uh, there are all sorts of contradictions and the circuit of capital and the social metabolism and it has to constantly be reworked um, and, and, and reestablished. It's, it's always running into crisis for, for him. And in fact, it's in a structural crisis now. So the question is with, with, um, with, uh, with socialism, uh, you know, he, he, um, he talked about the need to create that same organic relation where every part reinforces the other parts where you can't, you can't create socialism by by simply, as as someone said, as as simply um, attacking um, uh, private ownership, uh, you you can't do it simply by say uh, having 
worker control of production. You actually, that any, to, to um, pursue any one of uh, the, the elements uh, by itself won't work. It has to be, uh, it has to be self-reinforcing a social um, metabolic reproduction in that sense. So the, um, but the strategically, um, the communes were, were very effective in, in uh, Venezuela, but, but uh, Chavez translated um, with the help of uh, Michael Leibowitz translated uh, uh, translated uh, Chav um, Maseros's critique into the notion of the elementary triangle of socialism, where um, you um, where all the um, there had to be communal um, um, you know there had to be a communal exchange, uh, worker control of production, and uh, what's the third part of the the um, triangle anyway? The, each of the the uh, elements of of um, of the system had to reinforce the other one. So there's a whole notion of of um, of socialist revolution that's based on that, um, where um, where um, uh, if you if you simply uh, focus on one element and you don't have the same create the same kind of organic uh, system that capitalism has, where you know where it's um, it it is a, a genuinely a system of social metabolic reproduction. You you won't create a viable system. You won't be able to uh, survive. Um, and, and so that's the nature of the argument. So his critique of capitalism actually um, flows into uh, into a conception of socialism that's much more revolutionary than than uh, anything we've ever seen before. And uh, and yet, it's not revolutionary in the sense of being extreme. It's revolu It's more revol. It's more revolutionary. Not revolutionary not in the sense of being more extreme but more revolutionary in the sense of being more unified uh, and um, more holistic and uh, in that sense uh, you know it's possible to make it work in his argument mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thank you very much uh, that was uh, Thomas would you like to add something to you this know, my English is not too sophisticated that's why I will um, simplify the problem a little bit. Uh, Istvan okay. thought that uh, on the basis of the private ownership doesn't exist any kind of socialism. This is a social democratic or I don't know what kind of falsification. This is, doesn't exist. This is not Marxism. This I don't, I, I don't know what it is. But mixed economy in a, in a transition period, under the ruling position of the working people can live together in two different sectors. That was his position, which is go back to Lenin. You okay. see? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, and you know, this I, is that about the hybrid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So capitalist, social, etc. What uh, people, social, uh, so-called social democrats speak about that that the Swedish model is a social. No, no, but, but 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 yes, this yes. Is an I, absolute, absolute. I asked about yeah, but I asked about the socialist countries. So I did not ask about the uh, you know capitalist countries. So those who eliminated yeah. private ownership, these were the countries I was asking but about. But they do I was not have. The yeah, yeah. character of the state ownership uh, yeah. in the so-called socialist countries was absolutely different than the state ownership in, in the uh, Western capitalist uh, model. This is uh, also is not a question for each one and for us, this is not a, a um, discussion question. Okay. Um, but thank you, uh, Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo wants to speak, and uh, I let speak to our friends from different parts of the world. Uh, okay, uh, sorry because my English is not good enough to explain. 
our question, our complex question, né? But uh, first, three ideas. First, I was more skeptical than Mesaros about the Venezuela. Several times as I discuss with him, and I am so critical. It is first point, right? Why? I remember two ideas, vital ideas from Mesaros to present this ceticism. What? One, this, 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 this difference between Stephen Mesaros, my, I am sex. Né? Can you understand it? Can you understand? I have it more different than Mesaros about the uh, Venezuelan, Venezuelan revolution. Venezuela. Because one, one idea that Stephen presents largely in Beyond the Capital. The Marxist idea and the Trotsky idea of the impossibility of the revolution in one country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two, the second idea from Mesaros, so important to, in my opinion, the possibility and the difference between political revolution that Mesaros told a lot of time ago in the magazine Problemi di Socialismo in Italy, the political revolution can be national, but the social revolution, another question from Marx, or Marx, the social revolution must be international. This is a big problem to understanding the uh, uh, Russian Revolution, the China Revolution, uh, include Cuba Revolution, the Venezuela Revolution, because a big problem, the revolution in one country, uh, the mundial global, is global system of capital. Uh, according to Mesaros, and I agree, the political revolution can be possible in one country, but the rev social revolution is more difficult. The, the, the third idea from Mesaro, so important that would, I would like to remember against the Eurocentric tendency is the idea, the crucial idea that the working class is vital in large sense, in like the central uh, uh, relationship, the central uh, 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 force of the working class in the large sense. This is very important because several colleagues from uh, developed countries to, told you the end of the working class, the end, and Mesaros always even stay against this idea of the end of the proletariat, the end of the labor class. I, I, I think these three points, especially the one and two, are important to understanding the Venezuela the, uh, 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 Venezuela revolution, the Cuba revolution, and another experience in Latin, Latin America too. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ricardo, thank you very much for this as well. And I think we are getting to the, to the end of this panel discussion. Uh, people are saying that they need to go. And uh, before right, saying John thank you to, to speak something. Who wants to speak? I George. do. Uh, just yeah, on yeah, yes, just go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sorry. Just on go ahead. Ricardo's point, um, Chavez once said that um, Mesaros had told him he would, they would fail, they, you know, that, that the revolution in Venezuela would fail. Not that it wasn't worth doing, and it wasn't uh, vital. But they would ultimately um, fail because uh, you can't carry out 
um, a socialist revolution in one country, but it's necessary for us to try to move the whole um, international yeah. uh, move, movement forward. So he didn't differ from you, Ricardo, in that, but I think it was, it's a question of, well, do you, do you carry out the revolution and try to develop the, the new um, forms of revolution and do what you can for so, you know, your, your population, your people, and, and, and then try and promote it on a global level. The uh, last initiative that Chavez was going to take was going to take, which, which, um, which uh, Isfahan planned out with him in 2010 was to globally um, promote uh, a new international. They decided not to call it a fifth international because they wanted to get away from all of that and call it a new international. And Chavez was going to, uh, that was his, his main project once he won the next election, of course, uh, it didn't, you know, that's, that was exactly when he uh, came down, when he collapsed and, and came down with uh, cancer. I was, uh, I was actually there at the time in the, uh, so they, you know, they, but, but he was realistic about, about that. And, and, and yet he believed that you had to, you had to carry forward revolutions and um, ultimately, it would require uh, the international struggle, but we couldn't get there um, and, and except um, by um, starting revolutions in particular uh, localities. So I, I don't really think that um, there was as much of a gulf between, you know, your thinking and his as as you as you might believe. Uh -huh. I think this is a perfect ending uh, in that sense, that there is uh, um, a unity and critical thinking. Ricardo would like to reply once more. So Ricardo, the floor is yours. Right. I, I agree, John. I agree. <laughs> but uh, Mesaros is so optimistic. And me, no. This is a, for another moment. I agree the general idea. There is a problem in, in revolution in America Latina, the personification, I don't know the English name, the, the unique leader, the grand leader. For me, and no Mesaros, for me, this is a big problem in America Latina. See, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, uh, Chavez, but I agree that Mesaros has the conscience of this big problem. The socialism, I stayed two or three times in Venezuela. I agree your very good contribution. Okay, that's just <laughs> that's it. Bon Thank you very much. Yeah, and um, I say Thomas, 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 you last. started, you started and you finished. Okay, that's only going to one, be the last. Only one sentence, Ricardo, only one sentence. <laughs> that uh, Istvan was very optimistic. That's why he attacked that kind of Marxist critics in the West, who from a room liked very much the revolutions and didn't like the revolutionaries. You exactly. see exactly. that Castro was a dictator, etc., cetera, et cetera, and they are not uh, clear, not, uh, not real uh, pictures for the people because they made uh, different mistakes and crimes, etc. You see, and his optimism from this kind of critics. <laughs> could, could you follow me? Yeah, absolutely. Thank Crystal you very clear. Much indeed. Very, you very could, important. You could, yeah. Hello, Joe. Crystal clear. And, and this is this last op optimistic tone coming from a Hungarian philosopher, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I think, something unique that how it can be possible it shows the universality of Istvan Mesaros. And then one more thing I have to announce because I was asked to do that. So the first commenter was Marie Lavalier. And I just wanted to make that clear, not to Marie. depersonalize people and not to take it. So with that happy note and with the enormous task ahead of humanity in order to save itself 
uh, against the rule of capital. I think with this, we finish this. We sincerely thank you very much a lot for participating in this excellent to all the panelists. Thank and you for think, the attention. And thank you for the attention. And I think this is something which we have to continue very soon. Thank you very much.